Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome to Nano Lays at Dawn. This is Shadow Fury 333, your host. And I was planning on doing the FFA tournament today, but there have been some complications. Unfortunately, not a lot of people have shown up, and it just hasn't really gone off at all. So, in the meantime, until that starts up, let's go over Clan Wars. Because there was a. Clan Wars is the thing I mentioned, and it's. Clan Wars is a. It was a format that people started showing up bit of interest in 3v3 format between clan members i was recommending possibly going for like 1v1 stuff but i just like 1v1 i was thinking things like either the pro league style of cycling through players or having just each like it's sort of an elimination king of the hill type thing where each player has three each team has three players and it's 1v1 and whoever loses is knocked out in the next player on that team and if the entire team is eliminated then the other team wins but everyone wanted 3v3 but that's okay 3v3 is castable 3v3 is still reasonable so let's get to that. So Red Comet, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this map. For those of you who aren't, this is, as you can see, a flat vehicle focus map where the center is very important. Normally, in 1v1 2v2, the southwest and northeast are the only sections players start in. But now with the southeast and northwest, because there's three players, those are actually used, which means we can see some cheese play, some aggressive play from there. It's a bit of a wild card. It's considerably different from what I normally see on this map. So we will see how that goes, and... Point out, we have GBC on the west side, represented by El Terrero, Sprung, and Hokomoko. And on the eastern side, we have ISP, being represented by Chesty, Lori, and the Moose is Loose. I'm a bit surprised. I think El Terrero and Sprung, I'm not sure how GBC they are. Hokomoko is the only one with the GBC logo beside their name. But we'll see how that goes. So right now, opening up, we see that ISP is very rapidly going for an expansion. Very rapidly getting their economy up. Well, it looks like the GBC side... Hokomoko in particular being rather aggressive with the ducks, just wants to make sure probably get some attacking from there. So it's the thing is I actually did cast this previously, I just got screwed up. My numlock, my I have to have numlock on because my arrow keys got broken. I actually have, I'm getting a new keyboard pretty soon. But my arrow keys are busted for whatever reason, so I have to use numlock off and then that screws up my I have I have a hotkey using the numpad keys for turning on the microphone. Yeah, that kind of screwed things up. Sorry about that for anyone who's watching earlier and anyone who isn't. I don't see how that matters, but yeah. Just in case anyone was wondering. So El Torero is... Well, okay, I kind of know what's going to go on for the first few minutes, so I'm probably going to be focusing on that. El Torero does end up actually getting a bit of an army going. I don't know what happens afterwards, but they do get an army pretty quick. As does Hokomoko. Hokomoko going in pretty strong with these ducks. While El Torero is trying to hold off. Looks like Chesty's forces here. And Chesty is going to be going in for a quick Ravager as well. I don't know if I agree with that, just with all the Scorchers here on the other side. Scorchers pretty much beat Ravagers, and Scorchers pushing back Hokomoko's ducks. Hokomoko is not likely to be happy about that. Oh, I see. Okay, so El Torero and Sprung, according to chat, are acting as mercenaries, but have been part of both ISP and GBC. They're just fighting on the GBC side today. Although, I must say, they are fighting pretty strong. They are actually fighting for it. They aren't they aren't doing anything sneaky or underhanded. They are definitely doing their best. And like I said, ISP is being much more economical right now. And it looks like, there we go, El Torero trying to fight that off, trying to stop that expansion from happening, or at least slow it down a bit. Put some pressure on, make sure that they can't just get it for free. You don't want your opponent to get expansions economies for free. And El Torero and Sprung making sure that doesn't happen. And this is what I mean about the Ravagers. The Ravagers in a bad spot. It looks like it will be able to get away thanks to the support of the Scorchers, but still, that is extremely risky. And honestly, there is actually a pretty open spot here. This whole area is... There's a couple defenders and a Lotus. That's about it. There's not much else defending there, and that is very powerful. Like, because of that, it's going to be rather difficult for Chesty to really defend. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be much of a challenge for anyone to get in here. Like, El Torero has their... They have the Scorches here. Sprung. Sprung might want to be worried a bit about the center, though. At this point, however, ISP is still ahead by 6 metal. The small, small advantage, but it's still there. While El Torero... Oh, just reclaiming. Not really catching up. And now, this is where Ravagers are going to completely fall apart. This, this is it. This is... Ravagers are dead. I don't know if the Scorch is going to realize how much of an opening they have. Kodachi's down. Another Ravager's going to go down. Oh, El Torero is just going for this, and it looks like it's probably going to pay off with... Although, a bit of support coming in from Chesty, which will make this a problem. El Torero's commander... That, they're pushing through. They have the beam laser. They have... Taken through. Oh, they got destroyed at the very end after getting rid of the mechs and a couple defenders before they managed to do any real damage. Sprung coming in as well, and Hokomoko actually holding off with the ducks. They haven't really attacked too much. They've attacked a little bit, but not 
Nowhere near as much as the south side. Sprung's commander also putting themselves in a very forward position, very dangerous. But El Torero is just building up frontal defenses. Because they just want to keep things here. They just... Just take the south. Put up a beachhead. Attack from there. That is going to be the way to go. But yeah, it is going to be... Well... At this point, the center is the only one that, the only part that ISB still has right now. GBC is pushing in once again into the south side, and there's only a Lotus. That's it. There's a Lotus. Okay, there's a Ravager as well, but that's actually that's not nothing. But still, it's hard to deal with. El Torero will get some support in. Where is Sprung support, by the way? Sprung is actually kind of falling behind. Hokomoko opening up the north side. Moose's Loose could come in on this side right now. There's nothing to defend this. Nothing meaningful anyway. All the ducks are moving south. It looks like GBC is going to try to punch through the south side. Take that all down. Yeah, the ducks are moving south. And what else is there? Look, like Sprung's forces are kind of starting to move south too. But yeah, the ducks are definitely moving south. This is going to be pretty much it. And it looks like the FFA tournament is about to start. So I will, I guess, be continuing this afterwards. I don't know. It looks like the FFA tournament is actually going to start properly now. Well, let's just finish this up. Watch this through. And it looks like we have... Actually, is it starting yet? I don't know. I, I really have no idea what's going on right now. But at any rate, back to the game at hand. And GBZ moving in for... I don't know if it'll be the kill. What does Lori have? Lori going for a counterattack. Or Moose is not going for a counterattack. Moose should be going for a counterattack. Or at least should have. That stinger's going to be a problem. But this south side... Beaver coming in to defend, but there's nowhere near enough. Everything is pushed in here. Lori's only got a bit of defense here. Chesty is being hit hard. And Lodri did not have the defenses in place, and Moose is loose, trying to go for a bit of a counterattack along the north, but not much. There is nothing, as far as I can tell, that's really being done to deal with this. Though Chesty putting up a fine defense. Despite the problems, Chesty is actually managing to hold this off more or less, but it's not quite enough. That Reaper is being a problem. Chesty's commander about to go down, which will be a big blow. It's like a quarter of their economy down right there. So finally, GBC has the economic advantage, and El Torero is pretty much done here. El Torero and Sprung... Actually, no, El Torero is not done. What am I saying? Far from done, moving their commander to finish the job. That's really risky, but at this point, just about to get a level 3 commander. Now, on the north side, Wolverines are becoming a bit of a pain. They are making Hokomoko feel a bit of pressure, but not very much. Only a bit. Chesty's about to lose everything. El Torero is basically... Ta well, Knight, reclaiming, reclaiming Chesty's base while they're still there. Because, why not? Respect? What's that? Although, to be quite honest, it's not a bad idea to have your commander forward like that. Respectful or not, it's a wise choice. And Chesty is basically... Uh, yeah, allies, what the hell? What are you... What, where were you guys? I don't know, ISP was not there, and GBC had a nice coordinated attack. ISP did not see that coming. What is the ISP's radar, anyway? Oh, okay, yeah, they don't have much. Looks like... There we go. At this point, yeah, they don't really know what's in Lori's base too much. That is, GBC doesn't know much of what's there. But otherwise, I mean, Chesty's gone. Chesty's totally gone. Lori is... probably next. Although, a sweep from the south wouldn't be that strong. This Reaper is being a bit of a pain. Another Reaper's coming up. How many Reapers are up right now, by the way? There are three Reapers up, all of which belong to Lori. And... Over the north side, another slightly co less coordinated attack. Sprung coming in here, trying to deal with this, but the levelers are pushing back. Levelers and Wolverines. Pushing them back, being pushed back by Stingers as well. Hokomoko's Stinger push is coming in here while El Torero finishes up the south side. One more shot in that Reaper would do it, you know. There we go. That took it out. Yeah, Lori is the one who's up next, and this is not going well. I mean, it's already three on two. Lori, what are they even... Aegis in the center, they are really wanting to get that defense up going. I don't know, Aegis' large shield does mean that really El Torero can just push in pretty quick. Unless they're going for, they're probably going to morph into an Aspis and then try to use that to support some of their heavy tanks. El Torero's commander, however, is about to die despite having the disruptor shot, or Sunburst Cannon, what's Sunburst Cannon? I don't know, but yeah, burrowing himself into the ground, but not quickly enough. El Torero does lose their commander, but honestly, I don't know how much that matters. Chesty right now is... Chesty's still dead. Chesty's still gone. Basically providing some... Where's the income coming from? They have some income from somewhere. Okay, they're not totally dead. They have they have something. Now they have one worker. They're building up some mexes. But still, 
their south flank is gone. Like, they're wide open on the south. ISP is just open. And GBC is going to be able to take that as soon as they want to. I mean, the north side as well, the Wolverines are causing a much bigger problem. The Moose's Loose is definitely providing a bit more resistance. But even then, these ducks will come in and finish that off. And then from that, it'll probably be game one to GBC. And unfortunately, won't be able to watch game two until after the tournament because I didn't realize how long it would take for this thing to start up. Yeah, Lodri realizing they're dead. Yeah, they're... Game 1 goes to GBC, so ISP is going to have to bring it back in Game 2. It'll be their map choice when we get back to that. Unless... Okay, let's just see. I'm not sure how many people are actually in... Oh, they started without me. I don't know what's going on with the FFA thing. Okay, that was... What? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. The game just crashed. That's perfect. Alright, well anyway, I'm not sure what's happening now. Welcome back to Nanaliza Dawn, Zero K fans. This is the second match of the GBC versus ISP Clan Wars, and this time around we actually have GBC members who are actual GBC members, not just mercenary players. Hokomoko is back, but joined this time by Kane and Vistrisium, who are going to be representing GBC. And for ISP, we have the same tri trio from before. Lori, Chesty, and Moose is loose. And I am Shadow Fury 333 your host. This is going to be a pretty interesting match. Geyser Plains, as you can see, forces everyone to start off right in the same area. This is forced. The start spot is like a tiny little square right here and right here. Like this tiny little thing here. This is a very tight map. I'm really surprised that ISP actually picked this map, but they did. This is this team picked this specific map to play on. I mean, I don't know if they picked GBC switching off players, but I guess maybe some people were late at first and they just had Sprung and... What was it? Sprung and... Oh, I can't remember who the other person was. El Torero. Like an, they were instrumental to winning the last game. Yeah, instrumental... Uh, well, El Torero and Sprung were just mercenaries, but now it looks like... I guess they were late at the time. This happened this morning. I unfortunately wasn't there, but... Now we have replays, and it looks like this is going to be... Well, pretty aggressive once again from GBC. ISP, are they going... Who's going south first? It looks like... It looks like ISP is, in fact, literally trying to secure the south. This map, as you can see, plus 4 and plus 2.3 in the south. The south is huge. The center section is fairly big. Kane's actually taking that center plus 2.8, though, rapidly. Rapidly getting the economy up quickly. So, GBC's actually slightly ahead in terms of economy. ISP just running to the north. Moose is loose with a few glaives, while some outlaws baiting shots. Not really able to do much. I mean, at this point, probably just for defense. While Moose is loose coming in in harassment... And not much is going to be able to deal with this. These two Hermits won't be able to help, so Hokomoko needs to be, is going to be pushed back. And right now, I mean, Pastrisium and Kane going for pretty typical stuff. Hokomoko going for a Spiderbot Factory, which is a little unusual on this map. And Glaze coming in. Moose is loose, dealing some decent damage, getting some harassment in. GBC taking some damage, and it looks like Kane not able to defend against that. Kane is the only one currently able to really defend against that. They have Glaives, but... Already, two mexes have been lost. A third one going down as well, so that's about five metal per second that's just been lost at a stroke. But a couple of outlaws, and these outlaws really just baiting shots right now. They're slowing things down, they're making things inconvenient, but these glaives are the real story. Kane's commander taking some damage. Lodri's, Lodri's pyro should be finishing it off. And is that going to be it? Kane's commander is not dead. Just barely survives. Keep a track on it. I, I want to put that in triage. Get some repairs going. But it has survived. Close call, 300 health left, but that is definitely not dead. No big burst explosion. However, ISP did manage to take the center as a result. However, however, GBC is able to take that back. And ISP certainly did not take the south side of the map. Kane looking to secure that. Where is their conjurer? They had a conjurer up here. They have some reasoning they can get. Repairing the commander is pretty high priority right now. The thing about 3v3, in 1v1, by the time you get to about 10 minutes into the game, you'll have about, like, plus 20 or so. So, losing your commander is not the biggest deal. It's a bit of a pain, but above plus 20 and plus 25, losing your commander is more of a problem in terms of localized build power and having build power with firepower at the same time. That's the biggest loss. In team games, losing your commander is, at least for you, a massive... Like, it could be half your economy. Like, everyone right now is, like, 9 metal. Well, that would be 4 metal. Or 5 metal, rather, if any of them lost their commander. And I mean, after they get more of the map, obviously that'll become less and less of a problem. But the commander is individual income. It's not shared. The rest of this, everything from the mechs is shared. The commander is not shared. 
which means the commander would actually, like I said, it'd be half for that one player, and everyone else would have to assist them. It's a bit more of a pain. But right now, the center is actually pretty, I'd say pretty solidly in GBC's control. ISP is doing a good job trying to make sure that it doesn't get further than that, but it's definitely in GBC's control. They have 2 plus 2.8, they have plus 1.4, not that that matters too much. They want this 2 plus 2.8 really badly, and they have not taken this 6 medal in the south. I don't know why. I mean, Kane could do that whenever they like. They have a couple conjurers they could have right now just being paranoid around the commander. Okay, there we go. We see that the build orders have been set. This entire south section, so 7 medal. I don't really agree with the plus 0 0.7. Bit of a waste of time. Won't make a difference in this game, though. This particular match, ISP has been so focused in the center, they aren't going to care. And over to the north as well, Moose is loose, being forced just back. Everything being forced back. GBC has very rapidly taken the center of the map. Again, right now, ISP's best choice would probably be just realize, hey, wait a sec, something's going on along the south, but I don't think they do. No, they have no radar along there at all. I'm really surprised that Lori did not move to secure that when they had their pyro near there. That would have been the thing, I think, to do. Right now... That rogue is actually still providing a bit of pressure. Bistrician's commander needs to be needs to be back. Can't move forward. So they've lost a lot of firepower. Right now, that's open up. That's open this up. Chessy, good move there with the rogue, taking advantage of this open section. I mean, they're holding their own. ISP is not falling, and they're actually starting to push back a little bit. It's still tough though. They need to make sure not to lose units. That is kind of the biggest problem right now. But if they can take this. It's no big deal. They're actually starting to push back the center of Vistrician's commander in a very risky position. Support from Hokomoko, however, is going to mean that... Sorry, no, it's just Vistrician coming in. Kane's commander, however, is providing some very useful support. Vistrician's commander, still a juicy target, but cannot be taken out. Kane's commander is too much in the way. However, even Kane's commander will not survive this for too long. These rogues are still going to be a problem. And Hokomoko coming into the north, I think... Oh, nice. Nice angle here. Moose is loose, forced to go through a choke point to deal with these spiders. That is going to be a major problem. I mean, very clearly, it's a major problem. Like, not much can be done. This redback getting a lot more damage done than it should be. And that... That was a huge blow, opening up the Moose is loose. Opening up wide. And actually forcing... Ch Chesty moving north! Chesty, do not move north! That was a terrible move. At this point, ISP is wide open. This area is... Okay, no, never mind. Chesty's moved back. I was about to say, well, ISP would be wide open. Had that happened, if Chesty moved the rogues out of the way... Even now, ISP's got this giant wide open section on the south, which Lori seeking to protect, getting rid of Kane's metal extractor there. That's... You can't let your opponent have that metal extractor. Good move there. Still taking the center, but they aren't focusing on the south, and GBC, they have that approach vector. This radar will spot things out, but even then, there is that approach vector. And actually, I should point out that right now... Oops. Right now, that means that they know what's going on. They have radar along here. They know that there are metal extractors along the south side. So GBC is not the only one well-informed about what's going on. Unfortunately for ISP, GBC is... Well, okay, Chesty's doing fine. Chesty has a pretty decent army. Lori's actually been falling behind. Switching over to Firewalkers, that's primarily why. Once the Firewalkers back, or once the Firewalkers up, that could actually make some difference. Kane's commander once again forced into an uncomfortable position. But Hokomoko is making that north side uncomfortable. Moose is loose, about to lose that entire north side. The south side is already basically gone. Nothing is really sought to secure it. Lodri is taken out. They took out the section. They didn't do much afterwards. And Moose is loose, going for a counterattack. I think this is going to be one of the last attempts for ISP to really cut in here. Oh, take out the, good, take out the radar. Good job there. And is this undefended? Yeah, but uh, plus 1.4 actually is not bad. You know? I'd say that's not a bad move. Take that out. They move north. That should work fairly effectively. At least reducing the economy a bit, getting it a bit more even. Kane has a ton of reclaim to work with, though. This caretaker is being a very, very useful tool. And why is the cloaking effect gone wonky? But anyway, the sharpshooter's from Kane. Or is that Kane? Yeah, that's from Kane. And nice, nice attack around the back. I like that from Moose's Loose. They really did do some damage there. Evening out the economy once again. And Chesty is pretty much the only thing right now. I mean, Moose's Loose's attack was very effective. That was handy. Chesty, however, is the only one with a good solid standing army. They have the Rogue Thug Law Ball and that Rogue Supported Thug Law Ball. Although rushing into a pin, like they're rushing right into a trap right here. All sides coming at them. But Hokomoka's commander is under threat. That is... That is big. I mean, if they take out the commanders, that will basically even out the game. 
But even then, I don't know. This is this is tough. But I think Okamoku's commander is probably dead. Although this is very weird. The street stream coming in on support, but it's almost like the it's almost like it's flipping to an extent along the north side. Unfortunately, it looks like these forces are gonna be killed by Hokomoko's commander burst. That converse goes out and only one thug in the rogue dies. That's actually pretty good. Unfortunately, these forces are in a terrible position regardless. Like, they've lost all their shields. Bit of damage being dealt. That outlaw is doing a really good job. It's pulling more than its weight. And Moose finishing this area off, so at least one commander on GBC's team has been gone down. But still, ISP is not in a safe position. I'm actually curious. So, Lori, they have their commander. Moose has their commander. And Chesty has their commander in their base. So, right now, ISP has their commander. And that's primarily where their economy is coming from. And these three mechs, that's it. Okay, this one too, but that doesn't count for much. Actually, why is this not built? What the heck? That plus 1.6 is still useful. And the south side, Kane's taken that. So ISP, they pushed back GBC to the center, but they haven't pushed them beyond that. They're they're still in a tough spot right now. I would not be in a... I would not want to be in this position. ISP is just... I mean, if you look at how they're set up, they can basically attack, kind of concentrate to the north or concentrate to the south, but they're, like, their south side's super weak. They can be hit very hard here, and the north side has... it's gotten a lot stronger. Since that attack, it's gotten a lot stronger, and finally the Firewalker being put to use. A couple Firewalkers, the second one is being constructed. But yeah, that concentrated attack to the north, that's kind of the only thing that ISB has. This... if this fails, it's game over. And I don't know what chance it has. Unfortunately, not... not the best coordination. Those Glaives moving too forward too fast. Moose... Did not pull them back when they needed to. Those glaives, however, are still going to deal a decent amount of damage, but losing those glaives will be a problem. That red back finishing them off. I mean, that's that's one of those things where if ISP takes this territory, if they manage to take this, it's fine. But they're not going to take it. The Firewalker doing a pretty good job, but even then, that's only so much can be done with that. And this is the south. The south coming in, or south side being attacked here. Kane coming in with their commander. Level 3? Just about level 3. Yeah, 75% to level 3. Firewalker on defense is not a position you want to be in, that's for sure. And the north side being taken out. Moose's commander under some threat. Not quite a huge amount of threat yet. But still, those hermits are not friendly. The support should be able to deal with them, but still, this is just... Even a concentrated attack to the north just gets concentrated retaliation. Although at this point, Vestrisium is actually in a decent position. I think Vestrisium might be okay. I mean... Yeah, they'll be fine. Actually, it's Hokomoko as well. Vestrisium's commander just happens to be there. Vestrisium and Hokomoko are fine. They've, they've managed to hold it off. Kane isn't even necessary here. Kane's focus much more on the south side and the center. Take that out. Commander's gonna come in. What is the level 3? The level 3 is the heat ray on top of the heavy machine gun. I think this commander alone is probably going to... Oh, no, 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 no. Scuttle coming in. Now, the commander won't die, I think. No, no, it, it defused the scuttle. What is the scuttle's damage, anyway? Oh, no, never mind. The scuttle actually would have been death. That would have killed the commander. Wow. Apparently, Lori did not have enough... Or was it... Was it Lori? Yeah, it was Lori. Didn't have enough energy. No, I don't know what happened. That Why did that decloak? For whatever reason, that decloaked. I don't see Lori having low energy, but I guess that might have been it. Yeah, because that would have taken out Kane's commander. That's 8,000 damage. That's death. The commander would have gone down. This is... This is the last... Sh this is the last shot. This is the concentrated attack from GBC to finish the game. Firewalker being pretty useful, but... It's just... I don't know. It's tough on defense just because the units can move past the fire. And then hit the Firewalker. So that's why it's kind of tough. And it looks like this is going to be it. GBC will have won 2-0 in the very first Zero Clay Clan Wars, or at least the most recent one. But yeah, the first match of the 2015 Clan Wars, I guess? I don't know. This particular iteration of Clan Wars goes to GBC against ISP. Now, I'm not really sure how many clans there are. There has been some extra interest in clans as a result of this, which is cool. Hopefully people practice more and we get nice, because it looked like GBC was really coordinated. Or at the very least had... Maybe it had communication. ISP... That second game, they were pretty coordinated, but the first game, there was just... It felt like it was three people playing and not killing each other. Whereas GBC felt like they were actually working together. This game felt like ISP were working together. But unfortunately, they never took the south side. 
They lost some key skirmishes in the center, and I think Moose is, Moose is a little overzealous with those glaives. They probably could have pulled them that back, kept them alive, and just stopped that economy from going over to GBC. At any rate, that is it. That was 2-0. And between that and the FFA tournament, I hope you enjoyed that. And I think that will be it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching, everybody, and have a good night. And if you are interested in joining up with Clan Wars, there is a thread on the forum. You need to be part of a clan, although you can just make one arbitrarily if you'd like. But yeah, you need to be part of a clan to be part of Clan Wars. But yeah, just join up, and as long as you have three people, you can participate in this. And as far as I understand, it'll be every Saturday that doesn't have a regular tournament, and it'll be at 2 p.m. UTC, I think. Yeah, 2 p.m. UTC. So 7 p.m. PDT, 10... Or sorry, 10, 7 a.m. PDT, 10 a.m. EDT... I obviously 2 p.m. In, in the UK and like between 2 and 5 p.m. in Europe and I guess for Australia they're kind of out of luck I think it's like midnight in Australia midnight or 1 in the morning so unfortunately Australia is not gonna have as much of a chance but Europe and North America will have no problem with representation oh I see okay so Lordy pointing out the scuttle just has a terrible decloak radius that was really surprising like the fact that the scuttle couldn't do anything might have been partly because of the positioning, the fact that it was flat terrain. But yeah, that's good to know, that you can actually disarm scuttles that way. Oh, misjumped. Yes, that's true. It did misjump. Yeah, it, it jumped over here, and then that wasn't where the commander was. That was probably one of the big problems. If Kane's commander had died, it... I don't know if it would have been... I don't know if it would have gone differently. It would have helped, probably, but Kane was entirely focused on the south side. The north side was where there was actual issues, and the thing is, this was the biggest thing. This seven metal here, that was for the entire team. Kane's commander was only for Kane, and Kane was not attacking, and they were attacking the center. Yes, that would have helped a little bit. But, like, Kane's commander... Where is Kane's commander? Oh, they went back. Yeah, Kane's commander fell back anyway. Probably... Oh, it looks like... Oh, yeah, it looks like it fell back, tearing a swath through these rogues. Still a bit of a problem, so I guess Kane's commander's death wouldn't have been a bad thing. I don't think it would have changed the game, though. I think a large part of it was just that the economy wasn't taken that quickly, and key skirmishes in the center were lost. I think if Moose hadn't been quite so reckless with the Glaives, it would have worked out a bit better. I think Moose is kind of playing 1v1 style, where you can be a bit reckless with the Glaives, because destroying your opponent's economy is a huge deal. And you think in team games it would be a bigger deal, but at the same time, you have all the reclaim to work with, and you just know there's going to be some construction in the back. And you kind of need that to help in large battles. You want to get three players coming in, coordinating in one section. Anyway, that was that. Hope you enjoyed that. And thanks again for watching. Have a good night, everyone.